everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jennifer, and today I am putting together a intro luxury kit. <laughs> and really what I mean by this is somebody asked me a question about what my favorite products were. Like if I can only pick two brands, what would be my favorites? Or what would be my favorite lipstick? I, I get those questions a lot. And I can't, I, I don't have one favorite. I could never say I only would buy Chanel or I only would buy Dior. I mean, there are so many brands that do things extremely well. And there's lots of indie brands that do things amazingly well that are, that are new to the market. So what I thought I would do is put together a beginner's kit, a bag. Uh, now this is luxury makeup, so these things are a little bit higher priced. I recognize that you wouldn't be buying all of these things at once. I did not buy all of these things at once. Uh, when I was in law school, actually even before when I was in college, I started to put together, you know, my makeup collection. It's grown a lot <laughs> since then. Obviously I've thrown away um, all of that <laughs> from back in the day, but my um, tastes, I will admit, haven't changed that much. Um, the things I liked in the 80s and 90s, I still like. Um, I, I think, you know, I've refined my interests and tastes, but I, I still I still love a blue eyeshadow, um, just in a different way. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and put this kit together. Um, I already have some makeup on my face. It's been a, a long day, a long day of Zoom calls. <laughs> if you saw my reels, I did a like quick little reels of like getting together, getting myself together for at like six o'clock in the morning. Um, <laughs> for my day of Zoom calls. And you can see by my makeup that's on right now, this is how I normally look um, during the day for my Zoom calls. And I don't have on a lot of makeup. I have on some foundation, I have on bronzer, bronzer on my eyes, a little bit of eyeliner, mascara, I have my brows done, and a little bit of lipstick. There's not a lot to it. Um, because I feel like the, the meetings I'm having, the calls I'm doing, the, the topics are very, um, very serious and very intricate. And so I'm not really, I'm not, the, I'm not there about <laughs> my makeup. Nothing wrong, you know, if, if you wear bold makeup all the time, awesome. Um, just I don't personally in my, you know, daily work life. Um, but when I go to meetings in person or I'm doing events, I absolutely do wear <laughs> more makeup. Uh, that's just me, you know, that's, yeah, that's how I am. When I go back to doing in-person meetings, I uh, absolutely will wear more than I'm wearing right now. Uh, so here is my beginner's kit. Um, like I said, these are just sort of the things that I would say are my, my favorite in each category. There are some that are very, very close though, but I was trying to just do one and uh, I can do more of these to put together, <laughs> to put together more kits, um, but this is my first, my first one. Let's dive in. Okay, so first thing is uh, primer. I don't really use a primer. Uh, if you watched my channel before, I have primers. Um, the Augustinus, Augustus, Augustinus Botter um, by, uh, and Victoria Beckham is actually one of my favorites. I have it in gold and in the regular. It's a great foundation. It's really more of a moisturizer. <laughs> I like it. Um, uh, the Bobbi Brown one is very good. But the one that I wear practically every day and I have on today is the uh, Watery Oil. Youth Watery Oil by Guerlain, which is not a primer at all. It's a, it's a watery oil uh, that was meant for skincare and um, it plumps up my skin. It makes everything look nice. Uh, it's a great base. Really, really good. Just, I can't say enough good things about it. Uh, if you have dry skin, if you're more mature, like myself, um, in age, <laughs> not necessarily an attitude, uh, yeah, that that's an awesome product. Um, second thing that you must have in every kit, I don't care if you have luxury makeup, drugstore makeup, Lumify Drops. <laughs> I'm telling you, this, it, it, it it's worth, these are not cheap. These are, I, this size, I can't even see, I'm so tired. This size is 0.25 ounces, yeah, 
0.25. It's not even a fluid ounce. And I think this is like $20. Um, but these things are miracle in a bottle. If somebody said to me, uh, would you rather have like lipstick or Lumify drops? <sighs> Lumify drops. <laughs> um, so first of all, I suffer from allergies. I have severe allergies. Um, but also, you know, I work a lot and your eyes get red and your eyes get tired. My, I'm also dry, like, so, you know, my eyes get dry and they get red and these make your eyes look white and they calm your, your eyeballs, they make them feel better and they make them look brighter and younger. And I'm telling you, trust me on this one, get the Lumify eye drops. They make a world, a world of difference. I have told so many people about that and they've all been like, yeah, yeah, Jennifer, their eye drops. And I've literally like gotten texts like the next day. Okay, you were right. I'll get the Lumify. I don't know, I mean, they're awesome. Okay. So those are the like non makeup items that I always use every day, no matter what. Foundation. I had a really tough time with this because I actually have a lot of good foundations. Um, like a lot, I really like. But the one I ended on was the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate. I have it in 1.3, Nude Ivory. It is an expensive foundation, um, but it works extremely well for me. It's smooth, it doesn't settle on the lines, it's great for mature skin, it's the perfect shade match for me. It took me a while to find that, by the way. Don't give up if you first don't succeed in trying to find your shade match. Um, it just looks great on. It's just, it's phenomenal. It's just so good. Um, it wears well, it looks great throughout the day. I love that foundation. Um, the Chanel Sublimage is a good foundation, but compared to the Tom Ford Shade and Eliminate, in my opinion, not even close. Tinted Moisturizer. Um, so I had a tough time with this because I love the La Mer one, the t La Mer Tinted Moisturizer, and I love the new Say one. I think those are both excellent. But the one that I actually ended up with, it's just interesting, is the Paracone MD. This is the Face Finishing and Firming Tinted Moisturizer. And often I use this as, if you saw my SPF video, as my SPF, because it has an SPF of 30 in it. So the issue with this is that there's one shade. It does adapt to your skin, but I'm very pale and it does give me a tan. Um, and if you are a deeper skin tone, I don't, I don't know if it would have, you know, a cast to it. So I don't know. I would just tell you for me, it warms up my skin, gives me a beautiful glow. And my skin looks really healthy when I wear it. Really healthy. Like I get comments a lot like, oh, you know, you look like you, <laughs> like you're, uh, you got it like went on vacation. Now part of that is because my skin looks a little bit warmer, a little bit tanner. Um, but I also think it's the properties that are in here because it's a, a finishing and firming tinted moisturizer. And I don't know what it is, but when I wear it, my skin does look a lot better. So this is probably my favorite tinted moisturizer. But if I were gonna say for um, folks that are looking for you know a decent array of um, shades, I'd say the Say or the La Mer. Neither one of them has a great, I mean, there's not that many shades, but it is tinted moisturizer. So I think it stretches a lot further than a foundation, but, but still, um, that would be my, my only issue there. Okay. So foundation, um, powder. I don't use a lot of powder. Um, I have a lot of powder, but I don't use it a lot because my skin is dry. But if I had to say one powder, one, I would say the by Terry Hyaluronic Hydro powder. Now this I have in the rosy light shade. I also have it in the original shade, um, which I, is just translucent. Um, I'll try to keep it like a little bit thicker so you can see it on there. But one of the things I really like about this powder is that it doesn't, when you put it on your skin, if you do it lightly, it just smooths everything, but you don't get that layer of powder. If you're a person who has oilier skin, 
this may not be a powder for you because the idea of this powder is hyaluronic, so it's it's gonna it's going to attract moisture. If your skin is dry and you're using this powder, it actually I think works really well. If your skin is oily, I don't know. Um, one of the things I'll show you, I'm going to use one of my new um, Cajun Hughes brushes. I'm very excited. Um, so if you take like the tiny, I mean like I'm taking like in the cap, tiniest, tiniest amounts um, and put it on like under your eye area, which is, is where I often use this powder. Again, very lightly. You can already see like, do you see how like it brightened it and smoothed it out? Just like, it, it's kind of a miracle worker a little bit, at least for me and my skin. So I have the, like I said, the original and I have the pink, the pink rosy light. The pink kind of um, brightens up my face a little bit, I feel. So I like it a little bit better than the translucent. I use a little bit like that under my eyes often. Um, and then I will put it all over my face. And I will put some on at the end, but I want to show you a couple other products before we before we get there. Um, okay, contour. My suggestion for your contour kit. Westman Atelier. I have it in shade Biscuit. And then they have it... I don't know what the other shade name is now. I'm sorry, but this one will work, um, I think, for fairly um, pale all the way until... I'd say light medium. Um, I have not used the other one, obviously, uh, because this one is deep enough <laughs> for me and there would be no reason. Uh, I want to make sure it's biscuit. Yeah, it's biscuit. Um, but this is a great contour. Awesome contour. Um, it just, it works so well. I mean, honestly, I have only good things to say about this. Um, taking a, an old Charlotte Tilbury brush because I just want to show you. So literally, I'm just buffing this in and it's it makes a great contour. It's just easy to use because it's in a stick form. I travel with it everywhere. Um, the new Wayne Goss one, the kit, the um, it's the Radiance Booster is amazing, but the thing is, but the thing is, it's, you know, it's a larger compact. This is in a little stick that I can, you know, carry around with me and it's just so easy to use. And it can be used anywhere. You can put it up, you know, you can really contour your whole face with it. You can use it just like under your chin. I've done that before. Um, you know, you can contour out your cheeks, whatever you want to do with it, um, it just works incredibly well, it's easy to use. I mean, I love it. It won't break you out, or at least I don't think it will, <laughs> because I, I will admit, I don't really break out very often. I mean, I do, but I mean, I have had breakouts, but just, I admit, not a lot. Uh, okay, bronze. This was very tough for me because I really like a couple of different bronzers right now. One of them is the Gucci bronzer, love the Gucci bronzer. I'm really, really fond of the, the new Dior, number four. I think it's awesome. But if I was really putting together a introduction to luxury makeup kit, it's the Tom Ford Terra. Now, if you don't like a cool toned bronzer, they have other shades. Um, there's Gold Dust, um, which is definitely warmer and I do have it. Um, now, what I would say about the Tom Ford um, bronzer situation right now is that I was told that um, the large size was being phased out of Terra and there were numerous sales, I mean like 50% off kind of thing um, and more. So I, I would guess that either it's being discontinued or um, they're changing the packaging or something. But definitely, but definitely um, it is harder to find. Um, and I think, I think it's going away. I don't know that. I have 
two backups, three backups, two backups. I also have one in my um, 5,000 um, subscriber giveaway, which whenever I get there, it'll be in there. Um, so I would say that um, it is my favorite bronzer. Again, if you don't like a cool tone bronzer and you want the warmer one, the gold dust is also beautiful. Okay, so highlighter. Now, interestingly enough, I really was thinking about it and I don't really have like a highlighter where I'm just like, oh yeah, that's the highlighter. Like there's a number of highlighters I really like. The Burberry ones are, in my opinion, excellent. Uh, Danessa Myricks, love Danessa Myricks and her, her highlighters. Um, West Metallier, the highlighter sticks are awesome. Um, but the one that I really like, and I know this is gonna be controversial because a lot of people don't like it, but I really like it, is the Pat McGrath Champagne Gold. Now I know this is not everyone's cup of tea. I get it. Um, but I really like this a uh, highlighter. First of all, it's got like a real pink peach tone to it. And there's nothing else that I have that looks anything like it. Um, and on me and on my coloring, I really find it to be, um, I really like it. I just, I really like it on me. So that could be a very, like very personal choice. And other people might be like, yeah, I don't want that in my kit. So if you really, are really anti Pat McGrath, that particular highlighter, which I have heard people really don't like it. Uh, the one that I would say that I would invest in, believe it or not, is the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. This came out forever ago, and this, you can see, is very well loved. Um, I traveled with this for years. I still travel with it. Um, I like the bronzer in here. It works really well for me. It actually looks a little bit like the Terra. Um, and the glow really works. Now my understanding is there's two different, maybe even three different versions of this now. This was the original one. And I think it works on most people. There's a reason that Charlotte Tilbury became Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, when she first came out, I mean, she was doing, uh, you know, she's a makeup artist uh, to, to, to famous people. Um, but her products are good. Like, especially her initial products were great. Um, but the film star of Bronze and Glow I've always loved this and the bronzer looks good on, the highlighter works really nicely. So if I had to say like for an, a beginner's, again, beginner's kit of luxury makeup, I really think this is a great investment. Probably gonna get all kinds of comments now like how could you possibly, and be like, guys, <laughs> it's just my recommendations. Don't have to agree with all of them. Uh, oh, one thing I realized I overlooked, brows. So I have like a hate relationship with my brows. Um, when I was younger, my brows were super, super thick. Like my hair, uh, I had a lot of them and they were, they, all, they basically grew together. And then somewhere along the way, I realized that um, and like tweezed them all off. Like it was the nineties and anyway, um, and they've never quite <laughs> grown back. So I'm gonna be getting my eyebrows microbladed. You guys will see it um, in all its glory. Uh, fall time frame because I couldn't even get in to see a consultation until like the end of August. Um, but so what I do now is I use a couple of different pencils and the pencil that I would say is the pencil that I would begin with again, introduction luxury kit is the Gucci brow pencil. As you can see, it's very tiny. Um, it's a great brow pencil. It's super soft. It blends really well. This is in Auburn. They have a number of different shades. Um, it It's powdery, but it stays on. It's just, it's amazingly good. And if that is, again, we're talking about like a one product thing, I would say, yeah, I would say get that. It's phenomenally good. Um, and it's an excellent brow pencil. I have the Dior ones good. I, I've tried others, but the Gucci is the best in my opinion. That's the one to start with. And then for a um, brow pomade, the Kosas. The Kosas beats out the Tom Ford, guys, which, sh shocking, shocking. Um, 
This is called Airbrow, and I love this thing. <laughs> I love it. Uh, it looks a lot like the Tom Ford, to be honest with you. The brush is very, very similar. Um, but it comes in Auburn, comes in lots of shades, so that's the first thing. Uh, lots of shades, easy to find on Sephora. Um, and two, it holds your brows really well. Like, it keeps them up um, without having to be like a strong gel or anything. And you can put pencil over it. It's a phenomenal product. It is one of my finds of 2021. It'll be in that list. Um, it's awesome. <laughs> Love it. So put it in your kit. Doesn't have to be in Auburn because, you know, you probably don't have Auburn hair, but uh, absolutely love that. Okay. Blush. Um, I am going to have a blush. What did I call it? Blush battle. <laughs> There's a blush battle coming up. Um, but I want to wait until the Pat McGrath, until I have the Pat McGrath, because I just feel like if I feel, if I do it, I film it and Pat McGrath, it, it's literally coming out like at, when this goes up, it will are, they will already have been in, uh, released. That's just stupid. I mean, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta wait for them. So it will be Hermes and, uh, Chanel and Dior, Laura Mercier, um, Wayne Goss, Tom Ford, the whole thing. And, uh, I'm not going to do it by shade because there's just... There are too many shades, um, but I will do it on consistency across brand, um, the the texture, how well it wears, all of those things. Um, but if I was to say to an intro luxury person, you know, you don't have a lot of makeup or you don't have a lot of luxury makeup, Chanel. This is um, a tester, as you can see, because this is Mocha and this shade doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but there's a lot of great shades. I would tell you that if you can go and find um, some of the Chanel blushes that are the old formula, and when I say old formula, I mean the one before the changes that just happened, because let's face it, they've changed several times um, over the history of, of the blushes, um, I would suggest that. So how do you know? Um, sometimes they'll say, because some of the site, if you go on the site, it'll actually say like new, and those are the new formula. Um, and then there's other ones that don't say that. Um, but an easier way to do it is frankly, go talk to a Chanel, like go to a Chanel counter um, and ask them. <laughs> they'll know which ones are the original formula, which ones are the new formula. You can also get, um, you know, discontinued shades. Um, like mocha, which doesn't come in the new formula because it's been gone for years, uh, and things like that. Um, the new formula is not bad. The new formula is good. I just prefer the older formula. That's all. I would still say that if you are, you know, a new to the luxury market and you want to buy a blush and you can't get the older Chanel formula, I would still say the newer Chanel formula, that's the way to start. Um, the blushes are excellent. They are beautiful. They last. They look gorgeous on. Um, I, again, I'm going to do the blush battle and we'll talk about all the differences with all the, the different blushes. But when I reach for blush, there I go to Chanel. And there are a few caveats to that, but for the most part, I do. I go to Chanel. So that would be what I would include in my starter luxury kit. Okay. Eyes. I had the toughest time here, guys. You have no idea. Because there are so many good eyeshadow formulas. So many. Sydney Grace, which is an independent line. If you have not tried Sydney Grace, you're, you're missing out. Try Sydney Grace. Pat McGrath. Pat McGrath is amazing. Mothership. Buy a Mothership palette. Any Mothership palette. Buy one, seriously, it's worth it. Um, but for somebody who wants like a kit, like a luxury, you know, bag, uh, this is my luxury makeup uh, to start with. I have two recommendations. One is a single shadow and the other is a quad. And the single shadow is from Shantikai. Shantikai is one of my favorite lines um, I have two items from Shantikai. Well, no, three items from Shantikai in this luxury um, kit. And 
honestly, I can tell you everything they have is good. Everything. Uh, their foundation is amazing. They're really, it's amazing. Their Shantikai Future Skin and the Cushion. Fabulous. Um, they have a great SPF, actually. Um, their blushes are great. <laughs> their highlighters are great. Everything, everything they do is amazing. Their eyeliners are amazing. Um, and so if you just wanted to buy Shantikai, I'd be like, good choice. I, I really love all their products. Um, but their luminescent eyeshadows are something in another realm. They're, I, I don't know how they make these. So this is the elephant. Um, and the elephant is a shimmering taupe gray. It's a beautiful shade. You can make it more intense or less intense, depending on how you want to use it. Again, I'm going to use one of the K. Jane Hughes brushes because because I want to. <laughs> I'm going to use number 11 just because I haven't. I you know I just got them and I'm like ooh. Um, so I'm going to go in light with this. I, I do have, like I said, my bronzer on my eyes um, from my day of Zoom calls, but I just want to show you how easily. You can just, oh, this brush is really good. Uh, this is brush number 11, for those of you who are interested. That's just like a light sweep, and it just enhances everything. Like, like I said, I'm gonna do a light sweep of it on my eyes, but I will show you what that does. They have um, nine or 10 shades. I don't even remember how many shades now, but, um, You'll find a shade that you like. They have, you know, purpley cool tone shades, warm tone shades, whatever it is you're looking for. I promise you, they'll have a they'll have a shade for you. Um, there's a really from a couple of seasons ago. They have, um, I think it's I don't think it still exists, but it was called Mare, and it's like this seafoam blue, which is beautiful. Anyway. It's gorgeous. All right, so let me just bring you in close just for the eye look really quick. So look at that. I mean, it's just a simple wash of color, but not just, I mean, it's just beautiful. And like I said, I, I only thing I had on my eyes before that um, was some bronzer. That's it. All of the shades are like that. All of the shades look amazing. I'm t just amazing. Um, yeah. I would strongly encourage anyone to invest in get one of the luminous eye shades if you get nothing else from Shantikai. Um, and then for the quad, back and forth between Tom Ford and Dior and Suku. Suku's quads, stunning. Absolutely stunning. I love them. But I have to say, if you're gonna get, you were buying one thing for your kit, it's Dior. The Dior um, five colors, I called them a quad, it's a quint, um, that came out last year, 2020. This is the new formula. This is in soft cashmere. I picked this uh, one because honestly, this is a pretty simple, uh, yeah, simple color story. I'm going to take the really light shade in here. Just use it as a, um, a brow bone. Um, it's a beautiful quint, but it's something you could wear every day. It's really well curated. All of the quints are really well curated. If you stick with the ones that are in the regular line. So not the limited editions, not the ones that say luminescent, just the regular line of Dior quints. You cannot go wrong. The formula in here is outstanding. It stays on all day as you wear it. Me personally, I think it looks better. Great for mature skin, amazing for dry skin, beautiful gorgeous color stories worth every penny you will notice that on them it says six months self life for example this one soft cashmere i've had i've had it for a year i noticed no difference 
None. So I'm not telling you to keep it longer than the shelf life. I'm just saying I've had mine for a year and I noticed no difference in the way that it works. So, uh, absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. Lately I have tried some of the um, limited edition ones and I've had differing opinions about them. But the regular line, love every single one that's been introduced, every single one. And I have a video where I ranked at the time all the ones I had and so I can just tell you, I mean, love them. Um, okay, liner. The Chantecaille liner, eyeliners are amazing. Absolutely amazing. Love the Chantecaille ones, but if I have to pick one, it's the Chanel. This is the Chanel. Uh, the real name is the Stylo U Waterproof Liners. I just call them the Waterproof Liners. They come like this, um, and they are a, this is not gonna really, yeah, I'm gonna have to do this for you guys to see it. There we go. Um, they are not pencils. They're twist up. They are pencils, but you know what I mean? You don't sharpen them. You can sharpen them. The sharpener, if you guys might not know this, the sharpener is in the base. So this little thing comes off. I gotta be careful when I do it because I can actually pull it across the room. But <laughs> there's a little sharpener in the base that you sharpen it with. A lot of times, I don't know why people don't tell you that. I mean, I always knew that, but I guess some people don't know it. Um, so, you know, you put the thing up at the top and then you just sharpen. <laughs> it's really little and it feels a little awkward at first because you're like, is that working? And then you, you know, you see it. So, um, but these are uh, honestly my favorite liners of all time. Um, and my understanding is that they're changing the formula. <laughs> uh. Yes, Chanel uh, has decided to change their blush formula and their waterproof eyeliner formula. I don't know why. I hope it's for some good reason. Like I hope it's because the products that they're gonna use now are better for us or better for the earth or better for something, but I don't know that. All I know is that I love that formula and they're changing it. Now, here's the thing. They are coming out with seven new shades. <laughs> so of course I'm gonna get them. Um, and I'll let you know how the formula is. But there is a piece of me that's a little worried. So uh, I would say right now though, that is my favorite formula and I would encourage you strongly to, to go pick up one of the, I don't know, 20 shades that exist. I think I have like most of the shades, if not all of them. Um, okay, so mascara. Two things about mascara. One, I curl my lashes at all times. I never, ever, ever, ever not curl my lashes. My lashes are so freaking straight. Um, this is a Surratt uh, eyelash curler. It's the only one I use. Um, yes, it is better than the others. Yes, it is worth the fact that it is more expensive. If you're gonna have an eyelash curler, get the Surratt one. That's the one you should have in your kit and I stand by that. Uh, and that's that. Mascara. Mascara, look, all of this is very, per like all of this is subjective. All of this is personal. Everyone's gonna have different favorites. Uh, everyone is gonna have different suggestions for, for an intro luxury kit. But again, you're watching, <laughs> you're watching my channel. So in my opinion, uh, when it comes to mascara, it's the Chantecaille um, Longest Lash Mascara. This is the one, it's the Faux Sills Longest Lash. I think that's the full title everything will be in the description box, but this is an expensive mascara. It's like $80. Um, and the reason this mascara is better than all the other mascaras is that it actually helps your lashes grow and become stronger. Now, my lashes are very dry, like everything else, and I use a lot of different mascaras and I'm taking off makeup a lot for the channel and just, you know, for life. Um, and I am really careful, like I, I'm very careful with the way I remove them, uh, makeup and everything, but it doesn't matter. My lashes do get irritated. And in fact, you, can, you can't really see it, but there's a lash over here that um, either broke or like fell out, or you can see like a little gap. And 
I, it happens to me a lot, actually. It happens probably like, probably every like month or two, I notice it. It's usually this eye, don't know why. Um, but then if I use this mascara for two weeks, it grows back <laughs> and it looks really healthy. And in fact, all the lashes look healthy. And then I go use another mascara. Now I know what you'd ask, why do you even bother using another mascara? And what I would tell you, and I have this mascara on today, this mascara is a great mascara. It's lengthening, it looks beautiful, but it's not a mascara that's dramatic. It's beautiful and it definitely gives you length and it gives you, um, it gives you fullness, but it's not dramatic. So when I really want a dramatic look, I don't use this. Um, I use the Bite Beauty or I use the, the uh, Dior Over Curl, uh, the Jones Road. That, those give you really full, thick, uh, dramatic lashes. That's why. Um, but if you're somebody who's not even looking for that, <laughs> you just want really beautiful lashes all the time, Here's your mascara. You don't need to look anywhere else. It's really that good, seriously. I know the price is expensive, but again, we're talking about a luxury kit of makeup, so putting it out there. Okay, lips. Um, first, the By Terry um, Balm de Rose. I have this in the, I'm almost done with it. Um, I have this in the, like the balm, what is this? Why am I not, <laughs> why can't I think of what this is called? Okay, brain is gone. But the point is, this one is, you know, a little doe foot applicator and you put it on your lips and, you know, I love this stuff, love it. I would like to buy like a dozen of these and just have them in different places. It also comes in a little tub. I don't really like the little tubs. I don't mind using my fingers for things, but I don't really like, put, you know, I'm putting on my lips. I like this. So honestly, I really strongly recommend that product. It's really, really good. It softens your lips, but it doesn't make them greasy. It's just, it's excellent. Liner. The Chanel liner and the Dior liners, the new Dior liners are amazing. And there's, there's an example where reformulation worked beautifully. Chanel reformulated two years ago. I used to hate their liners. Now they're one of my favorites. Um, the Dior liners reformulated, I think it was last year or it might've been early this year. I can't remember anymore. It's all blending together. Um, I didn't really like the Dior liners before. Now they're fabulous. Uh, Chantecaille liners are really good. I did a whole actual video on liners. So I have a lot of good ones. But my favorite, I have to say, is the Sicily. This is in beige natural. Um, this is a pretty, well, neutral um, for most folks. Um, it's just, you know, beige. <laughs> um, On me, it comes off as more of a beige rose. Um, somebody who has more pigmented lips, it's gonna come off as just, you know, the shade of their lips. Um, chocolate is also another favorite of mine. Chocolate and beige natural are probably the two. Um, and again, both neutrals, um, you know, and then depending on your skin tone. Um, the Sisley liners are soft. They go on beautifully. They don't feather. They don't go into the corners of your mouth. They stay in all day. I cannot go on and on and on enough. They're all good. They're amazing. I have a lot of different shades, but beige natural and chocolate, my favorites. So lip products. I actually sectioned it into four because I couldn't just pick one. Um, but there are different types of lip products. So let's just talk about it for a second. First is what I would consider a long lasting lipstick or a liquid lipstick. And the only one that I can recommend is the Chanel. This is the Tenu. I, I did do a video with these. Um, these are no There's nothing like this on the market. I've seen nothing else like it. These are comfortable. They go on your lips. They look glossy for a while. Then they settle down to sort of this just, not even matte, it's just sort of a neutral lip look. They last all day um, and they're transfer proof, literally. Once they dry down, you're not getting these things off. Um, that's the only, <laughs> it's not a bad thing, it's just they're really hard to get off. Uh, don't try to scrub them off, that doesn't work. You want like an oil-based cleanser or something to get them off. Um, but they're beautiful, they work amazingly well. They're just really, really good. So if you're looking for a long lasting lipstick that's more comfortable, these are them. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of shades, lots and lots of shades. Um, 
We'll stick with Chanel for a second. If we're just talking regular lipstick, I also pick Chanel. Um, this is the Rouge Allure lipsticks, the little pop up like that. Um, it's just a really great formula. Now you'll say, well, Jen, you know, you used to work for Chanel, you're being, and maybe that's true, but I find the Chanel lipsticks to be great. There's lots of shades. They're very comfortable on the lip. Um, they have good staying power for a lipstick. Um, I really like them. <laughs> I really like them. Uh, there are, you know, glossy lips that they have now, the, the Coco Blooms, the Coco Flashes. Those are all fabulous too. Um, I like pretty much all the Chanel lip products, I have to say. Their glosses are great. Their Glossomers, love their Glossomers. Um, so I think, you know, if I had to pick in this area, if I had to pick just like, if you could only get one brand for lips, I would say Chanel. Um, I think they do a really good job there. But if I had to say like, a glossy lip, um, the Coco Blooms, the the new Gucci's are awesome. The I always want to say I always get it wrong. Gloss and lust is it's I don't know something in Care lipstick. I can't remember, but they're in the really you know 60s packaging. I love those lipsticks. I bought a lot of them, um, and they are great. But the one the one the only is the Ashantikai. These are the Ashantikai lip veils and they're just they're great <laughs> the lip veils are great they have lip cheeks and lip veils um they're just the lip veils are a little less um glossy than the lip cheeks so the lip cheeks are probably a little glossier when we're talking about gloss but i really what i mean is like a light lipstick not as creamy and opaque um and the lip veils and the lip gloss and the lip cheeks they're the things that are in my purse they're the ones that i wear um most of the time. They just, they, like I said, the lip veils are a little less glossy than the lip cheeks, but it's like a light wash of color, but it's enough. It's opaque, but it's not like overly so. I mean, they're awesome. Uh, if you're interested, this one is Tambodi. That was the one that was on my hand. Again, this is a lip veil. It's very neutral. Lip cheeks, like I said, are, are a little bit glossier. There's tons of different shades. They're just all they're great for your kit. Um, and I would suggest, you know, if you get a lip veil, it's a little bit more uh, natural lip and a lip cheek's a little bit more glossy. Um, and then you get a Chanel lipstick and a long lasting one. You're, you're basically good. Um, but the one other product that I do want to mention in lips is the Suku Lip Fog. And this, um, so this is the lip glow, actually. Um, the lip fog is uh, more, it's not matte. It's, it's really hard to explain. <laughs> it's like a fog. I've said that before, but it's got this really interesting texture that it's like, it's not matte, but it's, it's not creamy. It's just really unusual, but it's very comfortable. Um, but the lip glow, it's like a glossy, it's, it's like somehow they married a lipstick and a gloss. I don't know exactly how this stuff works because it lasts a really long time too and it looks beautiful on. As you can see though, it's not like, it's not too much. Like, this is gonna sound weird, but like when you think of a gloss, like when you think a real lip gloss, pulling out a Chanel uh, gloss, they're glossy. They're super glossy, right? Um, and I love lip gloss, but it's kind of sticky and it's kind of, you know, it's got, um, it's got less opacity to it. But you feel like if you mixed in some lipstick with it, you would get this. And that's what I mean, like, it's got, it's got the opacity of a lipstick, but a li but but the glossiness is there, but not too much, and it's not sticky. I don't know how they did it, I really don't. But I would say that the um, lip glows from Suku, they're worth trying. They're really really good. Um, but I really do love the lip glows. I love the lip fogs as well. And then last but not least is the gloss. The gloss is Chanel as well. And you know, 
There are other glosses I, I really like. Pat McGrath has a, a great gloss. Tom Ford used to have an amazing gloss, but they changed the formula and I don't really like the new one. Um, but the Chanel, uh, now I call them Glossomers, but their new name, of course, is Rouge Coco Gloss. I'm always gonna call them Glossomers. But um, they're great. <laughs> the gloss is great. And there's all kinds of shades. There's all different types of, some have like glittery particles, some have, you know, so more of a just a neutral. It's my favorite gloss, totally worth getting. The shade that I would recommend, uh, if you're just gonna get one shade, you're gonna call me crazy when you first look at it, I swear, but I'm telling you. Um, this is 804, yeah, 804. I know what it looks like, I know what it looks like. But on your lip, if you use this, and I can't do it now because I just have on too much stuff on my face. But if you use this over just like a liner, like the Beige Natural, I'm telling you what you'll get is just a very plump looking mouth. It will make, it looks fabulous. It really does. I know in the tube it looks like Barbie pink, but on the lips, it's amazing. And the formula is just awesome. Um, if they change this formula, I'm gonna cry because I really love this. <laughs> I would be very upset. Uh, all right, so just to finish off, I'm gonna take the By Terry powder and I'm going to buff it into my face very quickly. And there we go. I do love the meteorites, guys. I'm not saying I don't love the meteorites. I do love them. And I also love the Chantecaille powder. But again, gotta, gotta narrow these things down. Uh, and this was for those folks out there who are really just getting started in luxury makeup or frankly just want to buy, you know, one or two things in each category. They don't want to have 10, um, which I can understand. Um, these, price, these things are very expensive and frankly they do go bad. So not everybody wants to have, you know, five different options for their powder. Um, so that is my intro kit, my intro luxury kit. And I did not get into brushes. And the reason I didn't get into brushes is because that's a whole another thing. I did do a video with some of my favorite brushes, but it has been a while since I updated it. Since I updated it. I did get the, I did just get the Katie Jane Hughes brushes and I'm starting to play around with them. I have to say, I really do like them. And these are synthetic brushes. Um, trying to, you know, try out more synthetic brushes. Um, to see what I think of those. Um, but I could tell you, if you were to ask my favorite brushes, um, would be Sonia G and Chikahoto. Those are my, my favorites. Uh, Wayne Goss is also up there. Um, there are other great brands out there and I am trying new ones um, as we speak. But at the moment, if I had to just make it simple, <laughs> Sonia G, Chikahoto. And with that, I think we're done. So that's my kit, guys. Um, that's what I would put in my little travel bag if I were uh, putting together an intro luxury kit. I hope this was helpful. Please feel free to ask any questions in the comments below um, and uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope to see you in another video really soon. Bye.